See me right away. You're a welcome relief. Take a couch. It's been a day? No. Just a 15 year old schizophrenic and a girl of eight thrashed into catatonia by her father. Normal, really. You're in a state. Margaret, this is the most shocking case I ever tried. My bench wanted to send the boy to prison for life if they could manage it. It took me two hours solid arguing to get him sent to you instead. Me? I mean, to hospital. Now look, Harold, before you say anything else, I can take no more patients at the moment. I can't even cope with the ones I have. You must. Why? Because most people are going to be disgusted by the whole thing, including doctors. That's an absolutely unwarrantable statement. Oh, they'll be cool and exact. And underneath, they'll be revolted and immovably English, just like my bench. Well, what am I, Polynesian? You know exactly what I mean. Please, Margaret, it's vital. You're this boy's only chance. Why? What has he done? Dosed some little girl's Pepsi with Spanish fly? What could possibly throw your bench into two war convulsions? He blinded six horses with a metal spike. <gasps> blinded? Yes. All at once or over a period? All on the same night. Where? In a riding stable near Winchester. He worked there at weekends. How old? Seventeen. Oh, what did he say in court? Nothing. He just sang. Sang? Anytime anyone asked him anything. Please take him, Margaret. It's the last favor I'll ever ask you. No, it's not. No, it's not. And he's probably abominable. All I know is he needs you badly. Because there is nobody within a hundred miles of your desk who can handle him. And perhaps understand what this is about. Also... What? There's something very special about him. 
In what way? Vibrations. You and your vibrations. They're quite they... startling, you'll see. When does he get here? Tomorrow morning. I know this is an awful imposition, Margaret. Frankly, I didn't know what else to do. Can you come in and see me on Friday? You're a dear. You really are. Famous for it. Goodbye. Uh, by the way, what's his name? Alan Strang. You want to accept him? Terribly, I promise you. One more tentative little phrase, one more adolescent freak. The huge and unusual. What a great thing about being in that just business. You're never short of customers. Alan Strand, Doctor. Won't you sit down? Is this your full name? Alan Strang? And you're 17? Is that right? Seventeen. Well, double pleasure, double your fun, double mint, double mint, double mint gum. Now let's see. You work in an electrical shop during the week. You live with your parents, and your father's a printer. Uh, well, what sort of things does he print? Double your pleasure, double your fun, with double mint, double mint, double mint gum. I mean, does he do leaflets and calendars, things like that? Try the taste of martini. It's the most wonderful drink in the world. It's the right one, the bright one. It's Martini. I wish you'd sit down if you're going to sing. Don't you think you'd be more comfortable? There's only one tea in Thai food, in packets and tea bags too. Any way you make it, you'll find it's true. There's only one tea in Thai food. Now, that's a good song. I've never heard that before. And I like it much better than the other two. Can I hear that one again, please? Double your pleasure, double your fun, with double mint, double mint, double mint gum. You know, I was wrong. I really do think that one's much better. It's got such a catchy tune. Can you do that one again? I'm going to put you in a private bedroom for a little while. They are rather more pleasant than a ward. Will you please come back tomorrow and see me? Uh, by the way, which parent is it who won't allow you to watch television? Is it mother or father? Or is it both? Nurse. Well now, isn't it nice? You are quite lucky to be here, rather than the noisy ward. Let you go where you want to go, Texaco! I hope you're not going to make a nuisance of yourself. Oh, fuck off! Pack the bell there, and they lose down the corridor. Five hundred. 
and boys and girls. I can see them stretching away in the long queue right across the plain of Argos. On either side of me stand two assistant priests wearing masks as well. Lumpy, bovine masks. They are enormously strong, these other two priests, and are absolutely tireless. As each child steps forward, So you should be. I don't know why you listen. It's it's just professional menopause. Everyone gets it sooner or later, except you. Oh, of course. I feel totally fit to be a magistrate all the time. No, you don't. But that's you feeling unworthy to fill a job. I feel the job is unworthy to fill me. I'd like to spend the next 10 years wandering very slowly around the real Greece. Anyway, all the dream nonsense is your fault. Mine. Of course, it's that lad of yours who started it. Do you know, it's his face that I saw on every victim across the stone. Strang. He has the strangest stare I ever met. Yes. It's, it's exactly like being accused. Violently accused, but what of? Treating him is going to be unsettling, at least in my present state. His singing was direct enough, his speech is more so. He's talking to you then? Of course. It took him two more days of commercials and then he snapped just like that. I suspect it has got something to do with his nightmares. He has nightmares? Bad ones. We had to give him a sedative or two. Last night it was exactly the same. What does he do? Call out? A lot of screaming. Screaming? Uh, one word in particular uh, goes over and over again. It sounds like ick. 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 He goes ick. How weird. And then he bursts in just like that without any knocking or anything. Dad! What? The answer to a question I'd asked him two days before. Spat up with the same anger as he sang the commercials. Dad what? Who hates telly? It's a dangerous drug. Oh really? It may not look like that, but that's what it is. Absolutely fatal mentally if you receive my meaning. That's a little extreme here, isn't it? You sit in front of that thing long enough. You'll become stupid for life like most of the population. The thing is, it's a Swiss. It seems to be offering you something, but actually, it's taking something away. Your intelligence and your concentration, every minute you watch it. Do you see that? It's a true Swiss. I don't want to sound like a spoilsport, 
but there really is no substitute for reading. What's the matter? Don't you like it? It's, it's all right. Actually, it's a disgrace when you come to think of it. You, the son of a printer, are never opening a book. If all the world was like you, I would be out of a job if you receive my meaning. All the same, times change, Frank. They change if you let them change, Dora. Please return the set in the morning. No! No! I'm sorry. I'm not having that thing in the house a moment longer. I told you I didn't want it to begin with. I'm sorry. That's really extreme. Uh, she's an ex-school teacher, isn't she? Yes, and the boy's proud of that. She knows more than you. Does she? I bet I do too. I bet I know more history than you do. Well, I bet you don't. All right. Who was Hammer of the Scots? I don't know. Who? King Edward I. Who never smiled again? I don't know. Who? You don't know anything, do you? It was Henry I. I know all the kings. And who's your favorite? John. Why? Because he put out the eyes of the smarty little... Well, he didn't really. He was prevented. Because the jailer was merciful. Oh dear. He was prevented. Something order was to follow. Who said religion is the opium of the people? Karl Marx. No. Then who? Mine own beeswax. It's probably his dad. He was saying it to provoke his wife. And she could be religious. I shall find out this Sunday. I wanted to have a look at his home, so I invited myself over. If there's any tension over religion, it should be evident on a Sabbath evening. I used to tell him about falling off horses. 
Did you know? When Christian cavalry first appeared in the new world, pagans thought horse and rider was one person. Really? One person? Actually, they thought it might be a god. A god? It was only when one rider fell off, he realized the truth. Can you remember anything else like that you may have told him about horses? Well, not really. But there in the Bible, of course, he says among the trumpets, ha ha! Ha ha! The book of Job, hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? The glory of his nostril is terrible. He swallows the ground with fierceness and rage. He says among the trumpets, ha ha! Isn't that splendid? Ha ha! And of course, we saw an awful lot of vessels on the television. He couldn't have enough of those. But surely you don't have a set, do you? I understood Mrs. Frank wasn't approved. He doesn't. Why is he letting sleep on this afternoon to a friend next door? You mean without his father's knowledge? What the eye does not see, the heart does not grieve over. Does it? Anyway, vessels are harmless enough, surely. Oh, hello, dear. This is Dr. Dysart. How do you do? How do you do? I was just telling Doctor, Alex always added horses. We assumed he did. You know he did, dear. Look how he liked that photograph you gave him. What about it? Nothing, dear. Just that he pasted you to have it as soon as he saw it. Do you remember? My wife has romantic ideas, if you receive my meaning. About her family? She thinks she married beneath her. I dare say she did. I don't understand these things myself. Mr. Strang, I'm fascinated by the fact that Alan would have tried. Yes. Well, that's him. He's always been a weird lad, I have to be honest. Can you imagine spending your weekends like that, just cleaning out stalls, with all the things that he could have been doing in the way of further education? Except he's hardly a scholar. How do we know? He's never really tried. His mother indulged him. She doesn't care if he can hardly write his own name, and she a school teacher that was. Just as long as he's happy, she says. Would you say she was closer to him than you are? They have always been thick as thieves. I can't say I entirely approve, especially when I hear her whispering that Bible hour after hour up there in his room. And your wife is religious. Some might say excessively so, mind you. That's her business. But when it comes to dozing in down the boy's throat, well, frankly, he's my son as well as hers. 
She doesn't see that. Of course, that's the funny thing about religious people. They think their susceptibilities are more important than non-religious. And you're non-religious, I take it? I am an atheist, and I don't mind admitting it. If you want my opinion, it's the Bible that's responsible for all this. Why? Well, look at it yourself. A boy spends night after night having the stuff read into him. An innocent man tortured to death, thrones driven into his head, nails into his hands, a spear jammed through his ribs. It can mark anyone for life, that kind of thing. I am not joking. The boy was absolutely fascinated by all that. He was always mooning over religious pictures. I mean, real king he was, if you receive my meaning. I had to put a stop to it once or twice. Bloody religion. It's our only real problem in this house. But it's insuperable. And I don't mind admitting it. But you must excuse my husband, Doctor. This one subject is something of an obsession with him. Call it what you like. All that thing to me is just bad sex. And what has that got to do with Alan? Everything. Everything, Dora. I don't understand. What are you saying, Mrs. Trang? Exactly how informed do you judge your son to be about sex? I don't know. You didn't instruct him yourself? Not in so many words, no. You, Mrs. Tran? Well, I, I spoke a little. Yes, I have to. I've been a teacher, doctor, and I know what happens if you don't. They find out through dirty books and magazines. Well, what sort of things did you exactly tell him? I, I'm sorry if this is embarrassing. I told him about biological facts. I also told him what I believed. That sex is not just a biological matter, but a spiritual thing as well. That if God will, he may fall in love one day, that his task was to prepare himself for the most important happening of his life. And after that, if he was lucky, he might come to know a higher love than Mrs. Trang. I simply don't understand. Mrs. Trang. There now. There now, Dora. Come on. Love. Love as usual. No one's love. Laughing. No one's laughing, Dora. No one's laughing. Have the doctor. Questions, yours to answer them. Says who? Says me. Do you dream often? Do you? Look, Alan. If I'll answer if you'll answer. In turns. Very well. Only we have to speak the truth. Very well. 
So, do you dream often? Yes. Do you? Yes. Do you have a special dream? No. Do you? Yes. What was your dream about last night? Can't remember. I said the truth. That is the truth. What's yours about? The special one? Carving up children. My turn. What? What is your first memory of a horse? What do you mean? The first time one entered your life in any way. Can't remember. Are you sure? Yes. You have no recollection of the first time you noticed a horse? I told you. Now my turn. Are you married? I am. Is he a doctor too? My turn. Well, what? What is ick? You shouted it out last night in your sleep. Double diamond works wonders. Works wonders. Works wonders. Come on now, you can do better than that. Double diamond works wonders. Works wonders for you. All right. Good morning. What do you mean? We are done for today. But I've only had 10 minutes. Too bad. Didn't you hear me? I said good morning. That's not fair. No. The government pays you 20 quid an hour to see me. I know I heard downstairs. Well, go back there and hear some more. That's not fair. You're... You're a switch. A bloody switch! A fucking switch! Do I have to call the nurse? If she puts a finger on me, I'll bash her! She'll bash you much harder, I can assure you! Now go away! I saw a horse with Zeke. How old were you? How should I know? Six. Well, come on. What were you doing then? Digging. Is that possible? Well, what else? And... Suddenly, I heard this noise coming up right behind me. What noise? Hooves. Splashing! Splashing! The tide was out and he was galloping! Who was? This fellow, like a college chap. He was on a big horse, urging him on. I thought he hadn't seen me. I called out. Hey! Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa! Sorry, I didn't see you. Did I scare you? No. That's a terrific castle. What's his name? Trojan. You can stroke him if you like. He won't mind. Would you like to come up? I'll give you a lift. Okay? Here we go now. Just do nothing. Up, sit easy. Now all you do is hold on to his mane. Tight now. And grip your knees. Alright? Alright? Come on then, Trojan. Let's go! How was it? Was it wonderful? Can't you remember? Do you want to go faster? Okay. All you have to do is say, Come on, Trojan. Bear me away. Say it, Bear. Bear me away! <laughs>
you imagine you are doing? Imagine? What is my son doing up there? Water skiing. Is he all right, friend? The boy is not hurt. Don't you think you should ask permission before doing a stupid thing like that? What stupid? It's lovely, Dad. Helen, come down here. The boy is perfectly safe. Please don't be hysterical. Don't you be ladida with me, young woman. Come down here, Helen. You heard what your mother said. No. Come down at once, right this moment. No. No. I said, come. In my considered opinion, you are both dangerous to the safety of this beach. And in my opinion, you are a stupid fart. Helen, leave it. What did you say? It's not important, Frank, really. What did you say? Oh, Bara. Sorry, Cham. Come on, Trojan. Splash, splash, splash. We all got covered with water. Dad got absolutely soaked. Hooligan! Filthy hooligan! I wanted to laugh. Papa class refrap. That's all they are. People who go riding. That's all the world. Trample on ordinary people. Don't be absurd, Frank. It's why they do it. It's why they bloody do it. Look at you. You are covered. Not as much as you. <laughs> they are sand all over your head. <laughs> hooligan! <laughs> Filthy hooligan! <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's not funny. It's not funny at all, Dora. It's just not funny. And that's all I remember. And a lot too. Thank you. You know, I've never been on a horse in my life. Nor me. You mean after that? Yes. But you must have done it at the stables. No. Never? No. How come? I didn't get you. Did it have anything to do with falling off like that all those years ago? I just didn't get you. That's all. Do you think of that scene of? I suppose. Why? Because it's funny. Is that all? What else? My turn. I told you a secret. Now you tell me one. All right. I have patients who have things to tell me. Only they are ashamed to say them to my face. What do you think I do while done? What? I give them this little tape recorder. They go off to another room and send it to me through the nurse. They don't have to listen to it with me. It's stupid. Anyway, your time's up for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe? If I feel like it.
In all fairness, I must admit, it was a little extreme. The Christ was loaded down with chains, and the centurions were laying on the strikes. It certainly would not have been my choice, but, but I don't believe in interfering too much with children. So I said nothing. But Mr. Strang did. <clears throat> he stood it for a while. But one day we had one of our tips about religion. So he went upstairs, tore it off the boy's wall and threw it in the dustbin. Alan went quite hysterical. He cried out for days without stopping. And he was not a crier, you know. Thank you, Mrs. Strang. That is interesting. Exactly how long ago was that, can you remember? Maybe five years ago. Alan would have been about 12. How is he, by the way? Very well. <laughs> Please give him my love. You can see him anytime you want to, you know. Uh, one thing. Yes. Could you describe the photograph of the horse in a little more detail for me? Oh, yes. It was a most remarkable picture. You very rarely see a horse taken from that angle. Absolutely head on. That's what makes it so interesting. Why? What does it look like? It was most extraordinary. It comes out all eyes. Staring. Straight at you. Yes. That's right. It was then. That moment. That very moment I felt real alarm. What was it? The shadow of a giant head across my desk. Dr. Dysart! Mr. Dalton, it's very good of you to meet me. It is, actually. In my opinion, the boy should be in prison, not in a hospital at the taxpayer's expense. Uh, this must have been a terrible experience for you, Mr. Dalton. Terrible? I don't think I'll ever get over it. Jill's had a nervous breakdown. Jill? Girl who worked for me. Of course, she feels responsible in a way. Being the one who introduced him in the first place. Uh, he, he was introduced to the stable by a girl. Jill Mason. He met her somewhere and asked for a job. She got him to see me. I wish to Christ she never had. But when he first appeared, he didn't seem in any way peculiar? No. He was very good. He'd spend hours with the horses, cleaning and grooming them way over the call of duty. I thought he was a real find. Apparently, the whole time that he worked for you, he never actually rode. That's true. Wasn't that peculiar? Very, if you didn't. What do you mean? Because on and off that whole year, I had the feeling that the horses were being taken out at night. At night? There were just all things I noticed. Very often, one or the other of them would be sweaty first thing in the morning, when it wasn't sick. Very sweaty too. And its stall wouldn't be near as mucky as it should be if it had been in all night. I never paid it much mind at the time. It was only later, when I realized I'd been hiring a loony, that I came to wonder if he hadn't been riding all the time behind our backs. But wouldn't you have noticed if things were disturbed? Nothing ever was. Still, he's a neat worker. That wouldn't prove anything. But why would he do that? Are you asking me? He's a loony, isn't he? Why would anyone prefer to ride by himself at night when he could go off with others during the day?
invented? All right, it was. I'm talking about the beach. That time when I was a kid, what I told you about. I was pushed forward on a horse. The fellow held me tight. And let me turn the horse which way I wanted. On that bar going any way you wanted. The sides were warm.
I'm not doing this anymore. I hate this. You can whistle for more? I've heard it. Mr. Strang. Hello. I was just passing. I hope it's not too late. Uh, of course not. I'm delighted to see you. My wife doesn't know I am here. I'd be grateful to you if you didn't enlighten her, if you receive my meaning. Everything that happens in this room is confidential, Mr. Strang. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, is there anything you wanted to tell me about? There is actually one thing. Uh, your wife told me about the photograph. I know it's not that. It's about that. But it's worse. I wanted to tell you the other night, but I couldn't in front of Dora. What is it? Something I witnessed. Where? At home. About 18 months ago. Go on. It was late. I had gone upstairs to face something. The boy was in bed or so I thought. Go on. As I came around the passage, I saw the door of his bedroom was ajar. I'm sure he didn't know it was. From inside, I heard the sound of this chanting. Chanting? Like the Bible. Those big ads, so and so big at, you know, genealogy. I stood there absolutely astonished. The first word I heard was, Prince! Prince. Prince, begat, prince. That sort of nonsense. And Prance begat Prancus. And Prancus begat Flancus. I looked through the door. And he was standing in the moonlight in his pajamas. Right in front of the big photograph. The horse with huge eyes. Right. And Flancus begat Spancus. And Spancus begat Spancus the Great, who lived three score years. It was all like that. I didn't know the exact names, of course. And Lequus begat Nequus. And Nequus begat Flequus, the king of spit. And then he spoke out of his chinkle chankle. Chinkle chankle? I'm sure that was the word. And then he said, Behold, I give you Equus, my only begotten son. Equus? Yes. No doubt of that. He repeated that word several times. <coughs> of course, my only begotten son. Ek. Was. Ek. Ek. And then? Yes? What? He took a piece of string out of his pocket. Made up into a noose and put it in his mouth. And with the other hand, he picked up a coat hanger. A wooden coat hanger and... 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 And began to beat himself? You see why I couldn't tell his mother? <coughs> Religion! Religion is at the bottom of all this. What did you do? Nothing. I just thought and went back downstairs. Did you ever speak to him about it? Later, even obliquely? I can't speak of things like that, doctor. It's not in my nature. No, I see that. But he thought you ought to know, so I came. Yes, thank you. I'm grateful to you. Well, that, that's it. Is there anything else? There is, actually. What is it? On the night that he did it? Yes. That. That awful thing in the stable. Yes. That very night, he was out with a girl. How do you know that? I just know. I, I don't quite understand. Everything you. said in here is confidential, you said. Absolutely. Then ask him. Ask him about taking a girl out that very night. He did it. Goodbye, doctor. Thank you for the take. 
It was excellent. I'm not making any more. Oh, one thing I didn't quite understand. You began to see something about the horse on the beach talking to you. That's stupid. Horses don't talk. So I believe. What do you mean? Uh, never mind. Tell me something else. Who introduced you to the stable to begin with? Someone I met. Where? Brighton's. The shop where you work? Yes. That's a funny place for you to be. Whose idea was that? Dad. I'd have thought he'd have wanted you to work with him. I haven't the aptitude. And printing's a failing trait if you receive my meaning. I see. What did your mother say? Shops are common. And you? I loved it. Really? Oh, why not? You get to spend every minute with electrical things. It's fun. Of course, it might just drive you off the chump. I want to buy a hot plate. I'm told Philco is a good make. I'm sure it is, madam. Driving the lady shavers? I'm not sure, madam. Rob X table were. Pesco automatic tube brushes. Yes, I don't know. Window link. I want a field for one this ready. This is the Remington. I want a Remington. I Just... love the work. No, Sorry. I wanted the heat retain in Pesco. Sorry. I want you buy a hot plate. I'm too. I'm sure it is, madam. Remington, let me show you. I'm not sure, madam. Robert, let me work. I'll just go by myself. Pesco automatic tube brushes. Beautiful. Window link. I want a field for one this ready. Remington, Remington. I want a hot plate. Hello. Hello. Have you any plates for a clipping machine? Clipping? To clip horses. For the matter. I think I've seen you somewhere. At Dalton Stables? I've seen you too. You are the boy who's always carrying me to the yard around lunchtime. Isn't it? No, not me. Of course it's you. Are you looking for a job or something? Is there one? I can only work on weekends. We can always use extra hands. Can you ride? I don't want to. Please? Okay. Come up on Saturday. I'll introduce him to Mr. Dalton.
learn his drill. Learn it and keep to it. I want this place neat, dry and clean at all times. After you mucked out, Jim will show you some grooming, okay? I think Trooper's got a stone. Yes. Let's see. You're right. See this bee here? It's what's called a frog. We clean it out with this, what we call a hoof pick. Mind how you go with it. It's very sharp. Use it like this. See? You'll soon get the hang of it. Whatever you don't know, Jill will show you. Whatever she doesn't know about stables isn't worth knowing. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Mind how you go with that. Very sharp. First rule. Whatever you don't know, ask Jill. Actually, the first rule is enjoy yourself. Okay? Yes, sir. Good lad. See you later. All right. Let's start on some grooming. This is the body brush, and we start with that. Now you always groom the same way. <laughs> From the ears, downward. Don't be afraid to do it hard. The harder you do it, the more the horse loves it. Push it right through the coat. Like this. Down <coughs> towards the tail and right through the coat. <coughs> you try. Keep it nice and easy. Never rush. That's it. Again. Good. You've got a feel for it, I can tell. It's going to be nice teaching you. See you later.
must be marvelous being near them at last, stroking them, making them fresh and glossy. Tell me, what about the girl? Did you like her? All right. Just all right? Was she friendly? Yes. Or standoffish? Yes. Well, which? What? Which was she? Tell me, Alan. Did you take her out? Come on, Alan. Tell me, did you have a date with her? What? Tell me if you did. Tell me! What? Tell me, tell me, tell me! On and on and bloody on! Nosy Barker, that's what you are! Bloody Nosy Barker, just like that! Tell me this, tell me that, never stop! I'm sorry? Alright, it's my turn now. Now you tell me, answer me! We are not playing that Oh, you are playing what I say. Oh, Alright, what do you want to know? Do you have dates? No, I told you I'm married. Oh, I know. His name is Martin and he's a dentist. You see, I found out. Tell me, what made you go with him? Did you used to bite his hand when he did you in the chair? That's not very funny. Do you have boys behind his back? No. Then what? Do you fuck? That's enough now. Oh, come on. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me! I said that's enough now. I bet you don't. I bet you never touch him. You've got no kids, have you? Oh, is that because you don't fuck? Go to your room. Go on. Quick march! I'll give me those cigarettes. I'll get them to me! Now go! Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That boy's on the run so he gets defensive. What am I then? Wicked little bastard. He knew exactly what questions to try. Of course, of course, there's nothing novel in that. Advanced neurotics can be dazzling at that game. They aim unswervingly at your area of maximum vulnerability. Which I suppose is as good a way as any of describing Martin. Now stop it. Do I embarrass you? I suspect you're about to. My husband doesn't understand me, Your Honor. Do you understand him? No, obviously I never did. I'm sorry, I've never liked to ask, but I've always imagined that you weren't exactly compatible. We were actually. It actually worked for a bit, for both of us. We worked for each other. He actually, for me, threw a kind of briskness, a clear, inaccessible briskness that kept me keyed up for months. It's you who are wicked, you know. Not at all. It's not exactly the same from me. Antiseptic proficiency. I was like that in those days. We suited each other admirably. I see us in our wedding photo. Doctor and Doctor met Frisk. We were Frisk in our wooing, Frisk in our wedding, and Frisk in our disappointment. We turned from each other briskly into our separate surgeries, and now there's damn all. You have no children, have you? No. We didn't go in for them. Occasionally, I still trail a faint scent of my enthusiasm across his path. I pass him a picture of the sacred acrobats of Crete leaping through the horns of running bulls, and he'll say, Oh, Margaret, that's an absurd thing to be doing. Or he'll observe just after I've told him a story from the Iliad. You know, when you come to think of it, Agamemnon and that lot were nothing but a bunch of ruffians only with fancy names. Do you get the picture? He's turned to a shrink. Familiar domestic monster, Martin Dysart. The shrink shrink. That's cruel, Margaret. Yes. <coughs> Do you know what it's like for two people to stay at the same house as if they were in two different parts of the world? <coughs> Mentally, he's always in some grisly curve of his own inheriting, and I'm in some Doric temple. Clouds staring through pillars, eagles bearing prophecies out of the sky. He finds all that repulsive. from the Mediterranean, that whole vast intuitive culture, are four bottles of Chianti. <laughs> I, I wish there was 
one person in my life I could show one instinctive, absolutely uncrisp person I could take to the streets and stand in front of certain shrines and sacred streams and say, no, life is comprehensible only through a thousand local gods. And not just trees, but modern England. Spirits of seven trees, seven curves of brick walls, even chip shops, if you like, and slate roofs. I'd say to them, worship as many as you can see and more will appear. I had a son, I bet you he'd come out exactly like his father. Utterly worshipless. Would you like another drink? Oh, no, thanks. Actually, I've got to be going, as usual. Really? Uh, really? I've got an Everest of papers to do before bed. You never stop, do you? Do you? boy with his tear. He's trying to save himself through me. I'd say so. What am I trying to do to him? Restore him, surely. To what? A normal life. Normal. It still means something. Does it? Of course. You mean a normal boy has one head and a normal head has two ears? You know I don't. Then what else? Oh, well, stop it. No, tell me what? I want people to understand like this, Margaret. You're really disgraceful. You know what I mean by a normal smile in a child's eyes and one that isn't, even if I can't exactly define it, don't you? Yes. Then we have a duty to that, surely, both of us. Sushek, I'll talk to you. <coughs> Dismissed. You said you had to go. I do. Thank you for what you're doing. I know you're going through a rotten patch at the moment. I'm sorry. I suppose one of the few things one can do is simply hold on to priorities. Like what? Oh, children before grown-ups. Things like that. You're quite splendid. Famous for it. Good night. No. No. Good afternoon. Afternoon. I'm sorry about our row yesterday. It was stupid. <coughs> it was. What I said, I mean. How are you sleeping? You're not feeling all right, are you? All right. Would you like to play a game? It could make you feel better. What kind? It's called Blink. You'll have to fix your eyes on something. Say, that stain over there on the wall. And I tap my pen. The first time I tap it, you close your eyes. And the next time, open. Close. Open. Close. Open. And so on, till I say stop. How can that make you feel better? It relaxes you. You'll feel as though you were talking to me in your sleep. It's stupid. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I
Let's say I don't want to. Well. I don't mind. Good. Then sit here and start watching that stick. There. Sit. The thing is to feel comfortable. Relax absolutely. Are you looking? Yes. Go on. Good. Now try and keep your mind as blank as possible. That's not difficult. Shh. Stop talking. Are you ready? Alan. Alan, can you hear me? Yes. Good boy. Now, Alan, you are going to answer questions I'm going to ask you. And after you wake up, you're going to remember everything that you tell me. Is that all right? Yes. Good boy. Now, Alan, I want you to think back in time. You're on that beach you told me about. Above you, staring down at you, is that huge horse's head. Green dropping from it. Can you see that? Yes. You ask him a question. Does the chain hurt? Yes. Do you ask him aloud? No. What does the horse say back to you? Yes. What do you say? I'll take it out for you. And what does he say? Never comes out. They have been chains. Like Jesus? Yes. Only his name isn't Jesus, is it? No. Well, what is it? No one knows but him and me. You can tell me, Alan. Name him. Equus. Thank you. Does he live in all horses or just some? All. Good. Now you leave the beach. You're at home, in your bedroom. You're 12 years old. You're looking at Equus from the foot of your bed. Would you like to kneel down? Yes. Go on then. Now tell me, Alan, why is Equus in chains? For the sins of the world. What does he say to you? I see you. I will save you. How? Bear you away. Two shall be one. Horse and rider shall be one beast. One person. Go on. And my chinkle chankle shall be in thy hand. Chinkle chankle, that's his mouth chain? Yes. Good. Now think of the stable. What's the stable? His temple? His holy of holies? Yes. And there he spoke to you, didn't he? 
He looked at you with his gentle eye and spake unto you. Yes. What did he say? Ride me, mount me, and ride me forth at night? Yes. And then you obeyed? Yes. How did you learn? By watching others? Yes. It must have been difficult. You bounced about? Yes. But he showed you, didn't he? It was showed you the way. No. He didn't? He showed me nothing. He's a mean bugger. Right or fall. But then you mastered, you managed him. Had to. And then you rode in secret? Every three weeks. At midnight. More people would notice. On a particular horse? No. <coughs> Let's do it then, Alan. Let's go riding. What do you do? The first thing? Put on his sandals. Sandals? Sandals of majesty. Made of sack. Tie them round his hooves. Then? Jinkle chantle. He doesn't like it so late. But he does it for my sake. He bends for me, stretches forth his neck to it, buckle and lead out. No sound? Never. Go on. He's quiet, always is this bit, at least till the field. Then there's trouble. What kind? Won't go in. Why not? It's his place of ha-ha. What? Ha-ha. Make him go into it. Come on. Come on. Hunt! Hunt! 
you by hands, he commands himself. Naked in his jingle jangle. Stupid. He wants to go so badly. Go on then. Leave me behind. Right away now, Adam. Now. Now. Now you're alone with Equus. Equus. Set off Blackwus. Set off Nequus. Walk. Here we go. The king rides out on Equus. The mightiest of horses. Only I can ride him. He lets me turn him this way and that. His neck comes out of my body. It lifts in the dark. Equus, my god slave. Now the king commands you. Tonight, we shall ride against them all. Who's on? My foes and his. Who are your foes? The hosts of Pula. The hosts of Fischl. The hosts of Bispo, the house of Remington and all its rights. And who are his foes? The hosts of Jodhpur, the hosts of Buller and Jimkana, all those who show him off for their vanity. Die rodents on his head for their vanity. Come on, Equus, let's get them. Drop! <laughs> Steady! 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 Cowboys are watching. Take off the Stetson. They know who we are. They're watching us. And burning us. Burning low to us. Come on, Equus. Let's show them. Ganta! Ganta! And Equus the Mighty rose against them all. His enemies scatter. His enemies fall! Turn! Trample them! Trample them! Trample them! Turn! 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 We! Wow! Wonderful! Wonderful! I'm stiff! Stiff in the wind! My name! Stiff in the wind! Me on my legs! All my flags like whips! Roar! Raw! I am raw! Raw! Feel me! On you! On you! On you! I want to be in you! I want to be you forever and ever! Take what? I love you! Now, bear me away! Make up one person! 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 Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! particular horse he embraces. He showed me how he stands with it afterwards in the night. One hand on its neck, one on its chest, like a frozen tango dancer, inhaling its cold sweet breath. Have you noticed, he said, about horses, how they'll stand one hoof on its end like those girls in the ballet? Now he's gone off to rest. 
leaving me alone with Equus in the dark cave of Psyche. I shove in my dim little torch, and there he stands, waiting for me. He raises his matted head, opens his great spare teeth, and says, Why? Why me? Why ultimately me? Do you really imagine you can account for me? Totally, infallibly, inevitably account for me? Poor Dr. Dysart! Of course, of course I've stared at such images before. Before being stared at. And really often, now, the feeling with me is that they are staring at us. And this one, this one is the most alarming yet. It asks questions I've avoided on my professional life. world of phenomena, all equal in their power to enslave. Suddenly one strikes. Why? Moments snap together like magnets, forging a chain of shackles. Why? I can trace them. I can even with time pull them apart again. But, but why at the very start were they ever magnetized at all? Just those particular moments of experience and no others? I don't know that. And not as anyone else. And yet, yet, if, if I don't know that, if I can never know that, then what am I doing here? I, I, I don't mean clinically doing or socially. I, I mean fundamentally. These questions, these whys, they are fundamental. And yet, yet, they don't have a place in a consulting room. So then, do I? Feeling more and more with me. No place. Displacement. Account for me, say staring at us. First account for me. I, I fancy this is more than menopause. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you look at me like that. I'm not a doctor, you know, who will take anything. Don't you dare give me that scary advice, is trying. I know you're scared. They don't work on me. Leave here at once. What did you say? I tell you to leave this room. Goodbye, Alan. Mrs. Brand, what on earth is wrong with you? Don't you see? The, the, the boy is highly distressed. Really? Uh, of course. He's at the most delicate state of treatment. He's... he's <laughs> Totally exposed, ashamed, everything you can imagine. And me? What about me? What do you think I am? I'm a parent, of course, so it doesn't count. That's a dirty word in here, isn't it? Parent. You, you know that's not true. I know, I know. I have heard all my life. It's our fault. Whatever happens, we did it. Alan is just a little victim. He has done nothing at all. What do you have to do in this world to get sympathy? Blind animals! Sit down, Mrs. Trang. Look, doctor. You don't have to live with this. Alan is one patient to you, one out of many. He is my son. I lie awake and awake every night thinking about it. Frank lies there beside me. I can hear him. Neither of us sleeps all night. You come to us and say, who forbids television? Who does what behind whose back? As if we are criminals. Let me tell you something. We are not criminals. We have done nothing wrong. We loved Alan. We gave him the best love we could. All right, we, we quarrel sometimes. All parents quarrel. We always make it up. My husband is a good man, an upright man. Religion or no religion, he has love for his home, for this world, and for his boy. Alan had love, care, and tricks, and as much fun as any boy in this world. I know about loveless homes. I was a teacher. Our home was not loveless. 
I know about privacy too without invading any child's privacy. All right, Frank may be at fault there. He digs into him too much, but nothing in excess. He's not a bully. No, doctor. Whatever has happened has happened because of Alan. Alan is himself. Every soul is itself. If you added up all of our things we did for him from his very first day on earth to this, you will not find why he did this terrible thing because that's him. Not just all of our things added up. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want you to understand because I lie awake and awake every night thinking it out and I want you to know that I deny it absolutely what he's doing now, staring at me, attacking me for what he has done or for what he is. You have your own words and I have mine. You call it a complex, I suppose, but if you knew God, doctor, you would know about the devil. You would know that devil is not made by what mommy says and daddy says. The devil is there. It's an old-fashioned word, but a true thing. I will go. What it did in there was inexcusable. I only know he, he was my little Alan and then the devil came. anyway. What? You and your pencil, just a contract, that's all. What do you mean? Made me say a lot of lies. Did it? Like what? All of it. Everything. I see. You ought to be locked up, you bloody tricks. I thought you liked tricks. It'll be the drug next. What drug? I know. I'm not ignorant. I know what you get up to in this room. Shove needles into people, pump them full of truth drugs so they can't help themselves. That's next, isn't it? Alan, do you know why you're here? So you can give me truth drug. He actually thinks they exist, and of course he wants one. It doesn't sound like that to me. Of course he does. Why mention them otherwise? He wants a way to speak, to finally tell me what happened in that stable. Does he still say that today? No, I didn't see him. I cancelled his appointment this morning and let him stew in his own anxiety. And now I'm almost tempted to play a real trick on him. Like what? The old placebo. You mean a harmless pill? Full of alleged truth drug. Probably an aspirin. But he denied afterwards. Same thing all over. No, because he's ready to abreact. Abreact? Live it all again. He won't be able to deny it after that because he'll have uh, shown me, not just told me, but acted it out in front of me. Can you get him to do that? I think so. He's. He's nearly done it already. Under all that glowering, he trusts me. I'm sure he does. Poor bloody fool. Don't start that again. Can you think of anything worse one can do to anybody than take away their worship? Worship? Yes. That word again. Aren't you being a little extreme? Extremity is the point. Worship is indestructive, Margaret. I know that. I don't. I only know it's the core of his life. 
Think about him. What else has he got? He can hardly read. He knows no physics or engineering to make the world real for him. No paintings to show him how others have enjoyed it. No music except television jingles. No history uh, except tales from a desperate mother. No friends. Not one kid to give him a joke or make him know himself a moderate. He's a modern citizen for whom society doesn't exist. He lives one hour every three weeks, howling in a mist. And after the service kneels to a slave who stands over him, obviously and unthrowably his master, with my body I thee worship. Many men have less vital with their wives. All the same, they don't usually blind their wives, do oh, they? Come on. Well, do they? Oh, so you mean he's a dangerous, he's a violent, dangerous madman who's going to run around the country doing it again and again? I mean he's in pain, Margaret. The boy's been in pain for years. That much at least you know. Possibly. Possibly. That cut off little figure you just described must have been in pain for years. Possibly. And you can take it away. Still possibly. And that has to be enough. That simply has to be enough for you, surely. No. Why not? Because it's his. I don't understand. <laughs> His pain, his own, he made it. Look, you have to go through life and call it yours, your life. You have to get your pain first, pain that's unique to you. You can't just dip into the common bin and say, that's enough, he's done that. All right, he's sick, he's full of misery and fear, he was dangerous and could be again, though I doubt it. But that boy has known a passion more ferocious than I have felt in any second of my life. And let me tell you one thing. I envy it. You can't. Don't you see? That's the accusation. That's what this day has been saying to me all this time. At least I galloped. When did you? Harold. <coughs> That's absurd. Is it? I go on about my husband. Have you thought of the person on the other side? That finicky, critical wife looking through her art books on mythical Greece? What worship has she ever known? Real worship? Without worship, you shrink. It's as brutal as that. I shrank my own life. No one can do it for you. I tell everyone Martin's the Puritan, I'm the pagan. Some pagan. Such wild returns I make to the womb of civilization. Three weeks a year in the Peloponnese, every bed booked in advance, every meal paid for by vultures, cautious johns and hired fiat, suitcase crammed with carpet tape. Oh, such surrender to the primitive. Oh, and I use that word endlessly. Primitive. Oh, the primitive world. Such instinctual truths were lost with it. And while I sit there, baiting that poor, unimaginative man with the world, that, that freaky boy tries to conjure the reality. Pages of centaurs trampling the soil of Argos, and outside my window he tries to become one. I see that man night after night, a man I haven't kissed in six years. Alan stands there in the dark for an hour, sucking the sweat off his god's hairy cheek. And then in the morning, I put away my books on the cultural shelf, close up the Kodakram snaps of Mount Olympus, touch my reproduction statue of Dionysus for luck, and go off to the hospital to treat him for insanity? Do you see? The 
boy is in pain, Margaret. That's all I see. In the end, I'm sorry. <clears throat> that stare of his. Have you thought it might not be accusing you at all? What's that? Claiming you. For what? A new god. Too conventional for him. Finding a religion in psychiatry is for very ordinary patients. <coughs> Goodbye. It's all true. What I said after you tapped the pencil. I'm sorry if I said different. Postscriptum. I know why I'm here. <coughs> Nurse. Yes, doctor. Uh, tell me, is that strong boy in bed yet? Oh no, doctor. He always watches television to the last possible moment. He doesn't like going to his room at all. Uh, you mean he's still having nightmares? He had a bad one last night. Would you ask him to come down here, please? Now? Yes, I'd like to have a word with him. Very good, doctor. to the post scriptum. That's the right word. It's Latin for after writing. How are you feeling? All right. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't see you today. You were fed up with me. Yes. Can I make it up to you now? What do you mean? I thought we'd have a session. Now? Yes. At the dead of night. Better than going off to sleep, isn't it? Um, look, whatever I say has a trick or a catch. Whatever I do has a trick or a catch. But, but that's all I know to do and they work, you know that. Trust me. You got one of your tricks then? Yes. A truth drug? If you like. What's it do? Make it easier for you to talk. Like you can't help yourself? That's right. Like you have to say the truth at all costs and all of it comes in a needle, doesn't it? No. Where is it? Here. That's it? It is. Do you want to try? No. I think you do. No, I don't. Afterwards, you'd sleep. You'll have no more bad dreams all night. Probably many nights from then on. How long does it take to work? It's instant, like coffee. It isn't. Trust me. Well? Can I have a fag? Bill first. Do you want some water? No. Then, you can chase it down with this. What happens now? We wait for it to work. What will I feel first? Nothing much. After about a minute, a hundred green snakes should come out of that cupboard singing the Hallelujah Chorus. I'm serious. 
You'll feel nothing. Nothing is going to happen now but what you want to happen. You're not going to tell me anything but what you want to tell me. Now relax and finish your fag. This room's had some funny things. It certainly has. I like it. This room? You don't? Well, there isn't much to like about it, is there? How long am I going to be in here? It's hard to say. I quite see you want to leave. No. You don't? Where would I go? Home. Actually, I'd like to leave this room and never see it again in my life. Why? I've been in it too long. Where would you go? Somewhere. Secret? Yes. There's a sea. A great sea I love. It's actually where the gods used to go bathe. What gods? The old ones, before they died. Gods don't die. Yes, they do. <laughs> There's a village where I spent one night in. I'd like to live there. It's all white. Where would you know see Parker, though? You wouldn't have a room for it anymore. I wouldn't mind. I really don't enjoy being a nosy Parker, you know. Then why do it? Because you're unhappy. So are you. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Didn't you? Here, yeah, is, is that how it works? Things just slip out and you don't feel a thing. That's right. It's quick. I told you, it's instant. It's wicked, isn't it? I mean, you can say anything under it. Ask me something. Tell me about Jill. There's nothing to tell. Nothing? No. Well, for example, is she pretty? You have never described her. I don't remember. Well, what color hair? Don't know. Is it long or short? Don't know. Come on, you must know that. I don't. I just don't. Now listen to me. You have to do this and now. You're going to tell me everything that happened with this girl. And not just tell me, but show me. Act it out if you like. Even more than you did when I tapped that pencil. I want you to feel free to do absolutely anything in this room. The pill will help you. I will help you. Now, where does she live? Near the stables, about a mile. It's called the turn of entry. When Daddy left her, she was left without a bee. She had to earn her own living. You know, she never got over it. It turned her right off the bed. All my dates are to be sort of secret. I mean, she knows about them. But I can't ever bring anyone back home. She's so rude to them. She was always looking. At you? Saying stupid things. You've got super eyes. Anyway, she was the one who had them. There was an article in the paper last week saying, what point about boys fascinate girls? They said number one is, Bottoms. But I think it's eyes every time. They fascinate you too. Don't they? Me? Or is it only horses? Eyes? What do you mean? I saw you staring into nugget size yesterday for ages. I spied on you through the door. There must have been something in it. You're a real man of mystery. Aren't you? Sometimes it was like she knew. Did you ever hate? Of course not. I love horses' eyes. The way you can see yourself in them. Do you find them sexy? What? Horses? Don't be daft. Girls too. I think they go for a period when they pat them and kiss them and love. I know I did. I suppose it's just a substitute, really. That kind of thing. All the time. Until one night. Yes? What? She did it. Not me. 
It was her idea. The whole thing. She got me into it. What do you mean by one night? Go on from there. Saturday night. We were just closing up. Hey, catch! How would you like to take me out? What? How would you like to take me out tonight? I've got to go. What for? They expect me. Do you not say you are going out? I can't. Why? They expect me. Look, either we go out together and have some fun, or you go back to your boarding home as usual, and I go back to mine. That's the situation, isn't it? Well, where would we go? The beaches. There's a skin click over in Winchester. I've never seen one. Have you? No. Wouldn't you like to? I would. All those heavy sweets panting at each other. What do you say? Yeah. Cool. <coughs> go on. I'm dying now. Come on, you can't just stop there. I want to go to bed. Well, you can't. I want to hear about the film. Hear yeah, what? What? It was bloody awful. Why? Nosy Parker. Why? Because. Well. We went into the cinema. <laughs> She went to stay in this house where there was an older boy. He kept giving her looks, but she ignored him completely. In the end, she went to take a shower. She took off all her clothes, the lot, very slowly. What she didn't know was a boy was looking through the door all the time. It was fantastic. The water falling on her breast. Bouncing down now. Was it the first time you'd seen a girl naked? Yes. You couldn't see everything though. All around me, they were all looking. Staring up like they were in church. Like they were a sort of congregation. And then... Oh, Alan! What of it? Dad! Where? At the back. I think he saw me. You sure? Yes! Alan! Shh! Oh God! Shh! Alan, you could hear me, don't pretend. Shut up. Shh. Do I have to come and fetch you out? Shut up, old man. Do I? Christ's sake. Shh. Do I, Alan? Oh, fuck. Oh, Very man, it's man. Shh. Oh. Shh. Come my way. Oh, what's it? We went into the street. All three of us. We stood there by the bus stop. Like we were three people in a queue. Like we didn't know each other. Dad was all white and sweaty. He didn't even look at us. It must have gone on for about five minutes. I tried to speak. I said, I've never been there before. Honest, never. He didn't seem to hear. Jill tried. It's true, Mr. Strang. It wasn't Alan's idea to go there. It was mine. He just kept staring ahead. The bus wouldn't come. So we stood and we stood. Then suddenly he spoke. I'd like you to know something. Both of you. I came here to see the manager. He asked me to call on him for business purposes. I happen to be a painter, miss. A picture house needs posters. That's entirely why I am here to discuss posters. While I was waiting, I happened to glance in, that's all. I can only say I'm going to complain to the council. I had no idea they showed films like this. I'm certainly going to refuse my services. Yes, of course. So as long as that's understood. Then the bus came along. Come along now, Alan. No. No fast, please. Say good night to the young lady. No. I'm stopping here. I've got to see her home. It's proper. Very well. I'll see you when you choose to return.
Very well done. <coughs> yes. And then he got it. And we did it. He sat down and looked at me through the glass. And I saw what? His face. It was scared of you. It was terrible. I got the shakes. You were scared too? It was like a hole had been drilled in my tummy. A hole right here. And the air was getting in. Oh. People kept turning around in the street to look. And I kept seeing him just as he drove off. Scared of me. And me? Scared of him? I suddenly thought, all those airs he put on, receive my meaning, improve your mind. All those nights he said he'd been late. He first of a hot door, huh? Oh, your poor father. He worked so hard. Bugger. Old bugger. Filthy old bugger. Hey. Wait for me. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Why do I own business? <laughs> and then suddenly she began to laugh. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. But it's pretty funny when you think of it. What? Getting him like that. I mean, it's terrible. But it's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, friend. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. I know you're upset. But it's not the end of the world, is it? I mean, what was he doing? Only what we were. Watching a silly too. It's a game of life for the likes and I say. I mean, when the girls were taking a shower, you were pretty interested, weren't you? We keep saying old people are square. Then, then they suddenly aren't. We don't like it. What do you think about that? I don't know. I kept looking at all the people in the street. They were mostly men coming out of pubs. I suddenly thought, they all do it. All of them. They're not just dads. They're men with bricks. And dad, he's not just dad either. He's a man with a brick too. You know, I never thought about that. He's nothing special. Just a poor old sword on his own. Just a poor old sword. Yes, that's right. I mean, what has he got? He's got mother, of course, but she... She... She doesn't give him anything. That's right. That's very right. I bet you, she doesn't give him anything. She likes ladies and gents. You know what that means. Ladies and gentlemen aren't naked. That's right. That's really right. That would be disgusting. She'd have to put polar hats on them. Just put. Was the first time ever you thought anything like that about your mother? That she was unfair to your dad? Absolutely. How did you feel? Sorry. I mean for him. He's nothing special. He hates ladies and gents. Just like me. Posh things and la di da. Just like me. He goes up in the night and does his own secret thing which no one will know about. Just like me. There's no difference. He's just the same as me. Just the same. Christ! Go on. I can't. Of course you can. You've been wonderfully. Please don't make me. Don't think. Just answer. You were happy at that time, weren't you? When you realized about your dad? A lot of people have secrets, not just you. Yes. And that made you feel sort of free. Hit it. Free to do anything. Yes. What was she doing? <coughs> Holding my hand. And that was good? Oh, yes. Try and remember what you thought. As if it's happening to you now. Right at this moment. What's in your head? Her eyes. She's the one with eyes. I keep looking at them because I really want to... Look at her breasts. Yes. Like in the film. Yes. She begins to scratch my hand. You're really very nice. Do you know that? Running her nail at the back of my hand. Her face so warm. Her eyes. You want her very much? Yes. 
I love your eyes. Let's go. Where? I know a place. It's right near here. Where? Surprise! Come on. She runs ahead. I follow. And then, and then, I see what she means. The stables? Of course. No. Where is it? They're perfect. No. Or do you want to go home now and get your bed? No. Then come on. Why not your place? I can't. Now that doesn't like me bringing back us. I told you. Anyway, the bar's better. No. All that straw. Explode me. No. Why not? Then. Do you want to look in bed? What's the matter? Do you want to want to? Yes. But it's not. Then. Then. Horses. Horses? You are really talking. What do you mean? Oh, your feet. Let's get under that floor. We'll be warm there. No. What the last time I have to do? The sight of the horse is offensive. My God, we can just shut the door. You don't have to see them. All right. So what do you do? You go in into the temple, the holy of the holies. What else can I do? I can't say. I can't tell her. Shut it tight. All right. You're crazy. Lock it. Lock. Yes. It's just an old door. What's the matter? Why? You look weird. Knock it! Shh! Do you want to wake up, Jordan? Stay there, idiot! Describe the barn, please. Huge room. Full of straw. Some tools. A hoof pick. Go on. At the end, this big door. Behind it. Horses. Yes. How many? Six. Jill closes the door so you can't see them. Yes. What happens now, Alan? Come on, show me. See? It's all shut. Then it's just us. <coughs> Let's sit down. Come on. Hello.
She put a mouth in mine. It was lovely. Oh, it was lovely. Thank <laughs> you. 
to you, Alan. He won't really go that easily. Just clap away from you like a nice old nag. Oh no, when it was leaves, if he leaves at all, it will be with your intestines in his teeth. And I don't stock replacements. If you knew anything, you'd get up this minute and run away from me as fast as you could. The boy's in pain, Margaret. Yes. And you can take it away. Yes. Then that has to be enough for you, surely, in the end. All right.
I'll give him the good normal world where we are tethered beside them. I'll take away his field of ha ha and give him places for his ecstasy. Multi lane highways driven through guts of cities, extinguishing place altogether. You won't gallop anymore, Alan. You won't gallop anymore. Horses will be quite safe. You will, however, be without much pain. More or less completely without pain. And now for me, it never stops. The voice of Echo is out of the cave. Why me? Why me? Account for me. All right, I surrender, I say it. In an ultimate sense, I cannot know what I do in this place, yet I do ultimate things. Essentially, I cannot know what I do, yet I do essential things. Irreversible terminal things. I stand in the dark with a pick in my hand, striking at heads. I need, more desperately than my children need me, a way of seeing in the dark. What way is this? What dark is this? I cannot call it ordained of God. I can't get that far. I will, however, be it so much homage. There is now, in my mouth, this sharp chain. And it never comes out. Thank you.